What was once the only reason I would still go to MAGFest is now been released in a Chapter 1 format. A puzzle light platformer in the vein of Limbo and Eversion, are you ready to take on Parallelly? My first introduction to this game was, like, mid-2018. I saw their booth at too many games and decided to try the game out. About six months later, I'd seen the game again during MAGFest, where the key difference was that they had a scoreboard with completion times. I had no idea what possessed me, but I made it a personal goal to nab the top spot on the scoreboard, and then all of them. I revisited the game at MAGFest in 2020. Hey, it was like two months before COVID relax. And I was informed that we'd see a release in 2021. Well, we did. Kinda. In its current form, this game isn't all that much different from the versions I was playing at MAGFest. It's essentially Chapter 1 of the story, and contains only the first 12 stages. Granted, the way this game works, it's not exactly a breeze to get through when you're new to it, but I'll get started. The graphic style of this game seems to be what attracted a lot of players to the booth and the conventions that I attended. It's very dark fantasy, like paintings in a children's fantasy book with a sinister edge. You may start in a black-and-white Burton-esque house with a bug-eyed little girl chasing her patchwork dinosaur plush through a whimsical door, but you'll know you've entered a whole new level of hell the first time you try to pet one of those cute little bunnies. <laughs> to fit the childlike but still creepy vibe, the music remains very simple. Repeated tones, off-sounding piano notes, just chiming in and out constantly. It is easy enough to ignore, but you'll still notice it's there. The sound work can be pretty unnerving, but nothing outright horror game creepy. Some monsters will have a telltale snarl when they attack, and certain item pickups have a kind of magical chime to them. These sound cues can also be pretty useful for timing certain maneuvers, so it's not a game that I would ever recommend playing with your sound off. Explaining the game isn't all that difficult. As I've stated, it's a puzzle platformer that isn't all that puzzling. While Child in a Creepy World is a staple for games like Limbo, and you could probably draw some parallels there, there isn't any switch pressing, lever pulling, or block pushing to be found. In essence, all you need to do is platform correctly and avoid enemies. But the extra layer of interest lies with how you platform and avoid these obstacles. Layer was a pun there, get it? Um, okay, so the game's entire shtick is traversing parallel dimensions, hence the pun in Parallelly. The first stage shows only the forest, the second will add the desert layer, and the third stage and beyond will introduce a lava-filled hell dimension. You'll shift between these dimensions on the fly, by pressing bumpers on your controller, or whatever those keys are on keyboard, you absolute weirdos. You will always see a grayscale, transparent version of the adjacent layer, so you'll know when you need to shift and where to. For new players, this can be absolutely confusing trying to remember what button shifts in what direction. And even I have a hard time remembering this on occasion, even with as often as I've played this. You can shift at almost any time, even in mid-air, and you'll carry your momentum through these dimensions. But you'll only be blocked from shifting if the layer you're trying to shift to is already occupied by the ground or a wall. Shifting back also lifts you up slightly, while shifting forward will drop you a bit. Which can make some platforming sections get really nail-biting. This is also an increasingly hostile world. Any contact with enemies are an instant death, along with, of course, falling into pits or colliding with hazards like thorns or lava. These hazards are also contained within their own dimensions. The forest is filled with sharp thorns, bouncy mushrooms, shape-shifting rabbits, and tall trees to block your path. The desert will have no enemies, but it's loaded with sand traps, while wind gusts and pits will propel you upward. The hell layer is swarming with creepy demonic enemies like skull spiders and flying pig heads, while lava pools and magma jets make traversing the ground a bit tricky. Getting used to knowing how to handle each layer is key to getting through the game without too many deaths. Each level is also locked off with key crest collectibles that are used to unlock the door at the end of each level. This door will always be found on the forest layer, and not every door needs all of the keys that are located within a given level to unlock it. It's part of the reason that I find this so intriguing as a speedrun game. Lily doesn't move particularly fast, and your movement kit is limited entirely to jump and jump but slightly longer. It's the combination of your generally simple movement abilities and this dimension shifting mechanic that can make for some fascinating and nail-biting maneuvers, where taking scary risks can shave seconds off of your time. 
I still have yet to flawlessly execute my route, but I still feel my current second place on speedrun.com is an accomplishment in its own right, considering the first place spot is held by the guy who made the game. Come on, that can't count. The game currently ends with a chase sequence followed by a shifting puzzle, which will end the game and leaves you to head back into the menu. As of now, plans to expand the game seem to hinge entirely on getting any funding, as losing the convention circuit to the pandemic couldn't have helped get the word out any easier. There are plans to add more layers, including a snow level, and while I only take about 7-ish minutes to finish this game, it'll probably take newbies way longer, and I would love to have much more to learn and conquer. Here's to hoping more people find some merit in this game's simplistic charm. If anything I said interests you, the game in its current form only runs for about $4. I feel it's more than worth paying for if you think you'd find this as interesting as I do. Here's the hoping we get to see the game in its full form at some point in the future.